Hello and welcome back to the Let's Make a Game Engine series. Today we're going to be taking a look at custom allocators and why they're so important. So let's first talk about why we need custom allocators. So custom allocators are important in game engines and most projects. And if you see new languages, they're adding custom allocator support and more memory management like Rust and Zig. Memory allocators allow us to do a few things. One, we can speed up the way we allocate memory. So we could have a normal like malloc and free style memory, or we could have a block allocator that basically gets memory from little chunks of a big, big block of memory. We have things like frame allocators where we will allocate memory for a frame and then dish out little pieces of it to different systems and then at the end of the frame we reset all the memory and do it all over again and that can be a lot faster than using malloc and free or in c new and delete over and over again not just a lot faster it, it, it will literally change your entire project if you're using new and delete or malloc and free over and over again you're killing your performance now we know why we need custom allocators. I know it was a quick, quick explanation, but I like to move fast. So I made some changes to the project. Let's take a look at them. First, I created this memory folder and I created an allocator.h and an allocator.c. In the CMake list file, I added allocator.c so that it will get built. Let's take a look at allocator.h. So in allocator.h, we have three things going on. This will give you a little insight on how I like to set up my projects. Might look a little weird, but trust me. So since we're writing in a C-like style, at least for this base library, I have this struct allocator with an internal data pointer and a function pointer that is called realloc. Basically, I have this struct set up in a way where it will be like classes, but in C instead of C++. So this void star internal will be filled with uh, data from whatever builds the allocator. So we could have all different kinds of allocators. This void star realloc function will get filled with whatever the allocator's realloc function should be. As you can see, this might look a little weird. There's only realloc, there's no malloc and free. The way this will work, if we realloc something and we don't give it a pointer, it will use malloc. If we realloc something and we give it a new size of zero, it will use free. And if we realloc something and we give it a pointer and a new size, it will do a normal realloc. So this just makes the code a little bit more concise. We don't have to worry about malloc and free. Um, we will be doing uh, hashtag defines like little macros to create alloc functions and free functions so it looks better. But this way, we only need to fill one function pointer and it's a lot easier to manage. Then we have this. Now, this might look very, very weird. What this is, is a sort of namespace in C. So we have a struct allocator API. It will hold all of our allocator functions that we want to use. So it will also store a system allocator. This system allocator will be used by all the systems that don't need to track memory as fine grained as other systems. And yeah, we'll have some statistics in here and things like that. It's basically just a namespace. So instead of going namespace allocator API, we're just putting it in the struct. Then we have a little sneaky if def where we do if def links base, we have an extern C struct allocator API. So this will let other projects access our allocator API by using an extern C if they define links base. And in the CMake file over here, this is how you would add a define in CMake. You would do target, compile definitions, project name, a private definition in this case. So private meaning only this project sees this definition. And we put links base. Main.cpp or any file in our engine, it will be able to access this allocator API pointer. So let's look at allocator.c. It's a very, very simple file. Some, some weird things going on in the bottom, but let's get into it. The first thing we have is a struct memblock. And what this is gonna be, is this is gonna be a header that we attach to the memory we allocate from the system. 
So why do we need the header? Basically, we need a way of storing the size of our memory allocations. We could just force the user to remember memory sizes because if you're allocating memory, you should know the size. Ease of use for people using the base library or for engine developers or whatever will contain the size in a little header, an eight byte header um, that will just go in front of our allocation. So every allocation will have an extra eight bytes. And yeah, it's not the biggest deal in the world. If we have a million allocations, then you know, it, it might add up, but hopefully it's not the biggest thing in the world. So first thing we do is in our malloc function, we're basically just allocating memory, the size of this struct, plus the size that we would give in to our malloc function. We check to see if the system returned memory. If it didn't, we return null. And then we set the size, this internal member, to the size that the user passed in. So we're storing the size of the allocation that the user requested. And then we're returning P plus one. And what P plus one means is we're returning P, which is the memory block, and we're raising it by one in the memory address. So instead of giving the user the actual pointer to the memory block, we're incrementing the pointer by one, which is something called pointer arithmetic. And by incrementing this pointer, we're pushing it forward one space and only accessing the memory that's after this header. So instead of accessing all the memory that is this struct plus the size we allocated, we are just accessing the memory that is after the header. Maybe I'll make a video one day that goes more into detail about pointer arithmetic, but I would suggest just go to chat GBT asking what pointer arithmetic is in C and C++ and that can probably teach you a lot. Now we have our free function, which is super simple. We're gonna do a little bit more pointer arithmetic. So first we'll check to see if the pointer exists. So if it does not equal null, then we will create a memblock pointer and set it equal to our pointer minus one. So what we're doing is getting the address, getting this pointer that we returned from up here where we incremented this, the address by one. And now we are subtracting by one to get back to the memory address that has this header because we can't just free this pointer. We need to free the whole memory block because we have an extra eight bytes attached to it and we don't want to leak those extra eight bytes. So after we get this memory block, we just free it. Now we have a realloc function. And instead of using the system realloc, we are going to create our own because it gives us more fine grained control over how we track memory. So first we check to see if pointer is null, which is the case that we are mallocing memory. So we return our malloc. Then we check to see if the new size is equal to zero. So that would be a free. And then we do the same pointer arithmetic. So this would be our realloc function. We do the same pointer arithmetic to get the memory block. We check to see if the new size is less than the size we have already. And if it is, we don't do anything. I don't know how it works with the standard library realloc. I don't know if it shrinks the size, but for us, we're not gonna do that. Um, we probably shouldn't need to ever shrink the memory. I don't think that's something we need to do, we could just clear it and move space around. Um, if we ever need to, maybe we can come back to this. And then if the new size is greater, we are going to malloc new memory of the new size and then mem copy our memory block pointer to our new pointer, but we're only gonna copy the size that we stored in our real memory block. So, up here, we're creating this memory block just so that we can have it down here and get the size header so that we can mem copy this actual pointer size into this new pointer and then free the old pointer. And this pointer will get sent into the free function, which will again find the memory block and free the entire memory block. Then we just return the new memory. So 
pretty simple stuff nothing too complicated let's go down here we have some sneaky stuff going on <clears throat> some people might not like the way this works but just give it a chance so we have a struct allocator internal system allocator what we're doing is creating a static struct and filling the function pointer then we have a static allocator api and we are filling its system allocator with a reference to this static allocator then we have a static allocator pointer which if you remember is going to be this x turn c struct right here and we are setting equal to the reference to this static internal allocator api now this might look uh like it's the dumbest code in the world there's no reason to do it this way but eventually when we set up our plugin system having things set up with these namespaces and holding them statically and these are extremely tiny don't worry about holding these on the stack it will allow us to have a amazing plugin architecture where the entire engine could be made out of plugins every single file could be a plugin that was this video um, I'm trying to figure out how I want these style of videos to be. I want to be able to teach you guys things, but I also want to be able to work on this project and show you guys super quick progress. So you have a bunch of videos to watch and learn from and read the code and see how it was done. Um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Share with other people that want to make game engines. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.